July 28th, it's 5 o'clock. Good morning to you. I'm Owen Conflenti. And I'm Lisa Hernandez. Anavid Reyes is tracking the traffic, but first, let's start it off with, oh, actually, we're going to go ahead and get to that live presser uh, at, a, at uh, Brittany Jeffers' scene where that single-engine plane crashed overnight. Let's listen in. So these people are able to uh, traverse about freely, but uh, we, we don't investigate plane crashes per se. We hold the scene in FAA or the NTSB actually does the investigation, so uh, we try to work with them. They're going to work at their pace, but we'd like to get the roadway open so the residents of this subdivision are able to move about. It's a miracle that they didn't strike any of the houses, and it's a miracle that the people are still here. I was just going to ask you, can you talk a little bit about that? Do you know if the pilot was trying to, he realized he was coming down into a neighborhood, was he trying to steer away from a house? Is he just luck? I would venture to say uh, there was a higher power at work here. Uh, it's hard for me to conceptualize. I'm at five, six, seven thousand feet, and I'm going to land in this street right here, going at whatever last speed that they were going. So I, I tend to believe that there's probably a higher power at work here. Do you think maybe clipping the tree may have helped cushion some? Typically, what we've seen when you clip trees, that kills you. Okay. So I'm not really sure, but we see parts of the plane in the tree. Uh, when you hit a tree going plus 100 miles an hour, it's not good. What is it like for you to come to this scene and to realize, you know, both of these men survived? I mean, you talk This is not my first time. We've had another plane crash in this, cl close to this location. Um, and he didn't make it. So he landed in a pool house and the plane went into the pool. He didn't make it. So uh, it's always nice to see when they do make it. I've been to more where they didn't than they did. But I have been to more than just this one where they, they did make it. So I'm always excited and elated when I'm able to tell uh, the public that the people live based on what we see out here. So we talked to some neighbors who said they heard it, they called 911. Mm -hmm. Do you know, maybe it's too early to know, but how many people did call 911? I have no I have no idea. I have no idea how many people called me. Outside of going door to door, I wouldn't I wouldn't necessarily know that. Do you know from anyone at the hospital who may have talked to the survivors, like what's their state of mind right now? I imagine uh, they just survived an incredible situation. I would imagine they're probably um, in a, in a mild state of shock because they've gone through what they've gone through. But as I said, if they're up still breathing and talking, it's a good day. I'm sure the medical staff there assess them uh, because if, he, if any of them have head injuries, we, we need to get that really, really looked at. But I'm not a medical profession. So just the fact that they were transported and they were still breathing and among the living, uh, it's a good thing because planes don't necessarily travel at a slow speed. So when you strike any object at speed, especially one that causes the wings to come off, that thing turns into a rock as opposed to a craft that flies. Is this an experienced pilot? I, I couldn't answer that question. Can you say anything at all about the fuel that was that it had? I mean, I don't smell any fuel. But usually in these situations when the wings get shut off, they're the tanks, right? That, that is a good question. I don't see any evidence of fuel laying around the, the crash site. so. I'm, I'm not 100 percent sure. I'd imagine when the NTSB or the FAA gets here, they'll be able to determine the level of fuel and if there's any loss of it. But typically, when there's a plane crash, you do see some loss of fuel, but I don't see see any here. And it's kind of nice that it didn't ignite. Well, not only that, I mean, it creates a whole other hazard or issue when there's just uh, fuel laying across across the roadway, uh, especially if it strikes uh, after the plane strikes the tree and crashes and the fuel gets on the houses. That, with the electricity and the power, that could be a problem. So just to confirm, you don't know where the plane took off from, but it was headed to the right. Mm -hmm. Your name and title one more time. Sergeant Standifer, DPS, uh, PIO. Can you spell your... S-T-A-N, D is in David, I-F-E-R. Authorities uh, in Bear Creek Village this morning, um, this gentleman here basically in awe that the uh, pilot and passenger survived this single engine plane crash reported around 2 a.m. just east of Highway 6. Yeah, imagine that coming down in the, basically the middle of the night. I right? uh, can't see a whole lot and uh, amazingly these two were able to survive. Uh, of course we haven't gotten an update from uh, the hospital yet which we'll, we'll be looking into and our Brittany Jeffers is on the scene to bring us more but uh, too hurt but luckily 